Welcome back to Left on Red with me, Julie Haynes, and the runner over, Sanyo Sullivan. <laughs> no, Brenda Dennehy. There we go now. Go loud original podcast. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah, is. It is, yeah. So we're here, we're having a <laughs> big giddy. We're laughing, we're giddy. We're after a photo shoot. Notions. Notions, the two of us, we were like two fucking statues. Clowns. Ah, clowns. Yeah. Oh, clowns. <laughs> statues. <laughs> like, come here at the movie statue, John and Balance. She better moves than us. I know. She, we uh, were like, yeah. I was a scared to blink at one yeah, stage. Yeah, I know. And then he had that fan on and my eyes were water and everything. Yeah. My nipples were because I was you wearing was, no bra. I was like, no oh bra. My God, no bra. Yeah. I tell you a funny one then. I had to call Siobhan into the bathroom and I said, <laughs> I heard you shout I did, yeah, because yeah. I wearing this pink jumpsuit that I have on. Yeah, it and actually I actually looks like somebody in Abba's. Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. Angelica, what's, what's uh, the, Anna, Annika. Annika. Annika, Angelica. And anyway, I says to Siobhan, I goes, I goes, come here because I had knickers on. I was going to say panties. But I had a VPL. <laughs> Panties. A B one? A VPL. Visible oh. panty line. Right? Like a pad. No, I wasn't. A, not a pad. Panties. <laughs> knickers. Yeah, but they call knickers panties. <laughs> yeah, when you're 90, like. I know, but we used to call them panties. I never did. I also yeah. knickers. Yeah, anyway, I had, a, I had a VPL. And I wasn't wearing a tongue or anything like that. I just don't like tongues. I'm sorry. I wear a tongue. I don't. I wear a tongue now if I'm going to meet in a lad. I'm wearing a soft <laughs> mean tongue. Are you wearing a small tongue or a big tongue? And those you suck me in one. It's like one of those. Oh, one of them ones. Oh, ones. Okay, yeah, but right. it actually comes in tongue style. Oh, does it style. come in tongue mm. style? I just don't. I don't know. I put on the tongue though if I was going meeting some lad, just in case. Just in case. Because you know, you, you know, the carry on now. But anyway, I called it out and I goes, "Can you see the all knickers there?" And I goes, "Will I take them off?" Because do you know the way yeah. now? And then I think I said, "What?" I said, "Will the photographer think I'm a bit slutty or something, or tarty or something, or sexy or something like that?" Sure, took them off. I knew it was way better. The panty line. I know Brian. Right? No, no, no knickers. I know knickers on. Your man must have been like these two. Are right, gave me the two of these. But you know what? Actually, talk about panties, whatever you're calling them. Panties. Do you know what? I was at school. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for this. Sorry. I was in school and my knickers <laughs> broke. Right. Oh no, school, right? no. And I was in a school that was attached to a convent, and our teachers are nuns. Yeah. And I had to go up and tell my teacher who was a nun, and she was like, "Come with me, come with me." And we walked through the school into <gasps> the convent, and she came out with a pair of knickers. No. No way. The nun's knickers. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That's like, the nun's knickers. like a parachute. Yeah. Oh, um, what age were you then? I'd say I was only in like first class, mate. And how did your knickers break? I don't know. How did the fuck did the, her, the nun's knickers even fit me? That is so random. So random. You're going around with nun's knickers. The did nun's you give knickers. them back? I don't think probably so. Probably had to back in those days, no? Oh, probably. But you any one of the other people calling them panties? I've asked my mum now, because when you said panties, I actually remember that day. Panty, yeah, yeah panties. panties. Come wear my panties, like, pair of panties. Yeah, Bridget Jones pant pan- knickers, pan- yeah. Panties. 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 Did you ever call them panties? I never call them panties. I think back in the day we call them panties. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> I call them knickers. <laughs> knickers, no. I would like the knickers, yeah. The knickers, or my knickers. Yeah. Underwear, underwear. The weird old I know, we're knickers. leaving ourselves down big time here after coming back from a fancy photo shoot. No, Hair sure. Hair and makeup done, photographer, and then we're going about knickers and panties. You go wearing nuns, knickers. What, what are we like? Huh? Oh, yes, yeah. Did you get it though? Well, well, you're left on red. Left red, yeah. But we had a ball. It was for the podcast, new photos for the podcast. But it, we, it was a laugh towards the end. We were we were we moving kind of loosened a bit. Up we loosened up a bit. But then yeah. after, it was like, you know, just, it was like we were afraid of each other. Because uh, one of our poses was like me whispering into Brenda's yeah. ear or Brenda whispering into my ear and her I was like goal, you yeah, goal. goal dope look at ya notions no I was like, was like, it was shocked and then one of them was like look shocked and we're like shocked <laughs> shocked shocked we're shocked and your man was like what the fuck your man is probably like the two of them never traumatised he was like they were the worst ever the worst and then he was laughing to make us laugh and we're just staring we're, I, <laughs> I thought it was. I was like, something up with yeah, he was like, "Will he fucking laugh or like move yeah. or do something? You're not I, gonna crack." I thought there was his nervous disposition <laughs> about it or something because he kept laughing. But we didn't experience. You've notions there now for self or first yeah. photo shoot ever. <clears throat> but anyway, what's your scar? What's your news? So. So, so, so. I Go kept on. this actually from my Instagram. I went on a date over the week. Go Yeah. On. So I matched with this fella on Tinder. He's not from Cork, but he's working in Cork. He's from a different county. He's He is Irish. So we were texting anyway, kind of on and off the last couple of weeks, I suppose you could say. And he asked me out and I was like, grand. So I met him down in Crosshaven. Oh, yeah, fancy. I know, fancy, fancy. So he asked me out for lunch. Go on. Yeah. You know, Go I'm on. Eating, thanks I would come here. We're not even told about this. This wasn't even on your Instagram, but I wouldn't even tell me about this. Yeah, but wait, should I tell you? So sitting down and anyway, eating our lunch, and we were actually getting on really, really well. Like, and I actually 
was mad about him because we were texting for so long and I yeah. actually just waited this yeah. day you nearly fall in love with their personalities and like yeah. this guy now seemed so lovely very very genuine so met him and his for lunch eating away and next thing he was like two seconds I'll be back and just going to the bathroom but like he left his phone on the table yeah. so next thing as he was in the bathroom the phone lit up he was after getting a message but you know when your phone lights up you could see what yeah. screensaver is or what your wallpaper is there was a woman and two kids oh no yeah was a woman and two kids? Was it an older girl and two kids, or was it a woman? Like, like, I mean, like was a, it an, a was woman it like age, senior like, old with two children? No, 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 no. Like the, the woman was our age, and the two kids were kids. Kids, like yeah, yeah. So I'm like, and he has two kids. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, no. Would I get off my fucking walk out? But then I no. want to give him the benefit of the doubt as well. But then I was like, I can't exactly ask him when he comes back in with the bathroom. Come here, who the fuck is on your phone? Because yeah. like were you, I were was you, looking were, at the phone. You Did your heart sink? Sank. Absolutely. Like tears. Were oh my God. I, I'd actually be sick as well. Did you go over and touch the phone down? No. So like we were sitting opposite each other. Yeah. So his, it was actually yeah. like upside down. But I could see as clear as day. It was a woman with two kids. It was as clear as day, even though the phone was like upside down for me. If you, you get, look, like, I have, look, look. And then I was like, oh my God. So I took my own phone and I took a picture. No, the picture, I'm going to show you the picture now, but it is upside down. So um, you tell me what you make of this. I'm so glad now you took the picture You're because if to... that was me, right, I would be there thinking, I imagined it. It was something else. It was like, is it a, I don't know, is it a, something came up with his library or something like that do you know what I mean so you thought fast to take a picture of it yeah I'd be fucking sick don't be not afraid he'd come back and see you I taking a picture of his phone. phone yeah and then when it lit back up then I was like yes and I was like oh, oh. I was looking my like I was texting though do you know what yeah like, yeah yeah of course that. like it's, you could see it's clear as day it's a woman and two kids like they are two young kids aren't yeah. they yeah and he has two kids what age is his kids they're with that age I'd say yeah yeah no he no, said I he's not. finished with your one months and months and months. But why the fuck, if it is your one, why would he still have her as his wallpaper, screensaver, whatever you call it? If that was me, no, I would have froze. And my, like, energy, sorry, no, with the energy. <laughs> <laughs> my energy and everything would change. I'd have to nearly want to leave. I'll never forget, I told you that before, I was seeing some lad and up in his garment came oh, up yeah. the and I... I was all great crack. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I was Oh, like, sure, I was the same. As soon as he came back from the bathroom then... Oh, the mood just changed. Like, I was like, yeah. what the fuck do I say to this lad here now? And I didn't want to come across like, I was a stalker either looking at his phone, but it, it came up. Like, he got a message the phone brightened up and I could see his wallpaper. And have you said anything to him? No. Did you say anything to him? No, no, I don't know. How long to... did you stay and talk? No, to like, him? we had to finish our lunch, like. Did he pick up on any energy? We were... I don't, he said nothing, anyways, but you know, I was half men are thick, like. Yeah. He said true. nothing, but I'm sitting there. I actually wanted to stab him with my fork. Yeah. I was like, you fucking... And pain. then did he go to the phone and, like, who you don't know who the message was from? No, I don't know. So I he wouldn't cop that. on. Yeah, he wouldn't yeah. know. Oh, no. Like, I didn't, I didn't like, click into the message. Right? I know what I you mean, you couldn't. Seen, yeah, when he got the message, the phone lit up and I could see it was a woman with two kids. Unless, look, I'm always trying to give benefit of the doubt, unless he's still on good terms with her. Would you say it to him, though? You know me. You would sit <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a bit of like first date, and your ma- your man be like, "All oh, right, girl, can't." Do you have a stalk like, online? Well, he's not. No, that... no. I couldn't see nothing. He's not online. Oh, the public service kind of thing. Yeah, he's in. Um, he has a public service job. So um, that's the yeah. killer. Then you can't do some tracing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, like, I know. Oh my the god. I hate when they say I'm not. I'm not online. online. Fuck him. Even Facebook. Give me Facebook. Give not Facebook. Bebo. Nothing. Bebo. Anything. Give me my anything. Face. No. So yeah, I was a bit allergic to that now, as I said, I was kind of interim. We're kind of still kind of texting, but I am You're very, gone, very yeah, cold. I am very gotten I'm very cold. So kind of back on Bumble now on Tinder and that bush last oh night. Oh my then. god. Yeah, so last night then I matched with this fella on Bumble and obviously I have to text first on Bumble and I was like, Hey and he texts back and he was like, Hey, I'm busy here listening to your podcast. <gasps> I nearly fell off the fucking bed. I was like, ah nah. No. No, no, yeah. Oh, to me that's a bit of a turn off. Is it a bit of a turn off? Yeah, I'd like Don't to- don't tell you. Listen to it and fucking Fuck pretend don't you don't tell listen. Me, like, and why would he want to match with me anyway after listening to the no. fucking carry out of me? See, that's it. Yeah, I just go, I love him and say, Brad. But then I'd like to sit down with him and, you know, when you match with somebody and you go out on a date, you yeah. like to have the chit chat and yeah. get to know each other yeah. face to face. Like, leave him asking me questions. But you know, when they follow you on socials and listen uh, to your podcast, they know fucking everything they about do, you. Yeah. They know what kind of knickers and tongues and you I wear. And I was like. say is, 
this fella knows definitely going to unmatch you because if he hears the story about you wearing the nun's knickers. Oh, fuck, he's gone. That's all over. Gone. That's See, that's, wouldn't you think they'd say, I don't listen to it at all, don't even know you've podcast. Yeah. That's cool. what I'd be doing to somebody. Because we're a woman. We're a woman. Yeah, I'd be kind of like, I don't know you do that at all. Yeah, well, I would as well. I'd play very I, cool. Yeah, there was someone I did that to before. He was like, do you not know who I am? I was like, don't have a clue who you are. Yeah, and yeah. I knew well who he was. I was like, all right, very good, good for you. Yeah, I And he's more mass than me then, you know, but did I know? Knew his PPS number near. Same, blood type, knew his blood. aunt. Slight <laughs> thing was scrolling through people. I was even at his aunt fucking Mary's wedding and all I know who the page boy was <laughs> back in fucking 1992. <laughs> Christ. Uh, the blood type. <laughs> <laughs> That's in a new law, even for our standard. I do, though. Oh. Remember the last one? Remember the last one? I was looking up his fucking tries and everything. <laughs> That's fairly bad. I'm very bad. I'm <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> fucking so Um, I'm going off to yeah, Rome for myself. Rome. I'm going with my best friend. Yourself? Yeah. Isn't that cute to be able to say that? <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, that's my new line now. Anyone says, who you going to my best friend? I was like, but you're going by yourself. Yeah, I'm my own best friend. I've made up my mind. Good I'm girl. Now, you see, do you know the way everyone asks, who's your best friend? Who's your best friend? I can easily say my sister Julie and no one mm. gets offended, you know. But then I was kind of like, oh, I think I'm my own best friend. And I think that's a nice way to be. So I'm going my own best friend. We are going. We. And I can't feckin' wait. I booked the... The Vatican, I got that recommendation off you, so I can't wait with a poppy. I have to wear a jacket and all that. Can't be showing the old legs or, or shoulders. neck and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Shoulders, even though neck. it's gonna be warm out there, but just wear. Like, That's grand, so I'll dress appropriately. But then I was telling the lads at work yesterday about it, and they were, like, "Oh, you're all herself after all." I was like, "Yeah, myself and my best friend." They were like, "Oh, who's she?" I was like, "No, one fella said is she hot." I go, "Very, <laughs> very hot." And then one fella, then he was like, he chimed in, and he says, uh, "You know, if you're there on a Wednesday, you get to see the Pope." Mm. And I was like, what? And of course, all I could think about, what a laugh this will be. Obviously, Catholic and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, it'd be nice to see Francis. Are you going to go into the Vatican? I'm but that booked. I paid to do that and all. With the crowd I went The crowd on. you went with. Yeah. Coliseum. I look, I'm going to go see it and go, grand, whatever. But you know what you should do with the Coliseum? I'm sorry, we'll go back to the Vatican then next. With the Coliseum, even just go for a coffee or something. That's it's all in the area. Yeah, 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 but yeah. like, I'm not going to bother going and get No, the it's, it's quite long. It was like £70. Yeah, yeah, and it's very long. I did pay no £70 pounds or whatever it was for the Vatican, the Basilica, the that's worth it though. Yeah. And I'll do that, whatever. And that's on the Tuesday morning, whatever. But then on the Wednesday, I'm flying back home on Wednesday. No, Wednesday or Thursday. Jeez, I must make up my days when I'm going again. I'm going to be there for the Pope's Mass yeah. anyway. And then one of the lads told me, and I was like, how do I get tickets for the Pope's Mass? And of course, you know how impulsive I am. Yeah. Oh, I was tearing into how do I get tickets for the Pope's Mass? You'd swear no Champions League final I was going to. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, I was like, it was worse than, <laughs> do you know the way everyone was getting excited for Coldplay tickets yeah. there a couple of weeks ago? I was like, fucking up to 90, Papal Mass, Pope. How do I, <laughs> Googling how do I get tickets to see the Pope? And I had to Google some crowd anyway, some bishop's office anyway, and I'm on the list. Oh, so you didn't actually get tickets yet? They get back to me, but there's a certain place you can go to collect them the day before. But I'm 100%. I was telling someone last night coming home and the flight goes, I'm going to see the Pope's Mass. She's very negative because that takes a few hours. And I was, I was like, look, I'm going to see the Pope, all right? You know, she was trying to turn me yeah. off it. I know, Joe. Because I was like, that's good content for the gram as well. Yeah, I record it. Do you know, I think yeah. it'll be last. I'm going to be all holy. We're going to be holy. And hopefully, you know me now. You know, I do think I'm, there's a bit of Italian in me. I used to be obsessed with the Italian yeah, soccer team, yeah. so I'm going back to the homeland with my best friend. You see yourself near Beth. Yeah, so I can't wait. So I know he in... actually doesn't live in the Vatican. He lives in a hotel. I did not at all. You're spoiling yeah. that now. Yeah. What am I going to the fucking Vatican so far? Just to see it. Like, you'll see all the paintings and the, the ceiling work and stuff like that. Like, it's beautiful. It's a, the, that was the best What hotel is there. he in? I don't know. It's fucking Marriott. I don't know. <laughs> Clayton down the road. I don't know. They're all Pope. But just kidding. I love a ball. You love a ball. But last week we interviewed Claire, who um, was stalked by her next neighbour, and we actually got so many of uh, so many replies. So I'm just going to read one here. It says, "Hi girls, I just listened to your stalking podcast, and I had something very weird happen to me years ago whilst renting a shared house. It's not a stalking story, but it's a case of you don't know who you're living next door to or with." It was 2011. I had just broken up with my boyfriend who had been living with in London for around two years. At the time, I was earning 16000 a year, so my accommodation choices were limited. 
I was 26, newly single and wanted to live my best London life. So I went for a room in a shared house. The room was small and cost £650 a month. But I was delighted because I could walk to and from work in just over 20 minutes. And it was accessible to any part of London for socialising at weekends. It was three storeys. The ground floor just had a kitchen, which we all shared. Next floor was a woman in her 50s from New Zealand and a chef in his 20s. Then on the third floor, there was three bedrooms. A Polish woman in her 20s shared the biggest room with her teenage sister. I had the smallest room and in the Zoom across from me, there was a guy in his 20s. Let's just call him John. John smoked weed constantly. The entire place stunk of it, but I thought nothing of it, to be honest, and I felt like it was normal behaviour for a single man in his 20s. He always seemed pleasant, but he was very, very vain. I noticed whenever I spoke to him in the kitchen, he would be staring at his reflection in the window behind me. He had longish hair that he liked to swoosh from side to side with his hands. One evening, he knocked at my bedroom door and I opened it to find him standing there in just his underwear swooshing his hair. I was like, are you all right? He said, yeah, I was just coming to say hey. I went, all right, and closed the door on his face. This guy, John, never cooked. He never even had food in his house. Then all of a sudden, he started coming in with exotic food like fresh squid and all of that kind of stuff. He also started stealing my food. I was really struggling for cash, so couldn't spare anything. And I wrote a note to ask the person to stop. John came to me and shouted at me that it was him who was taking my food, that I was out of order for saying he can't take it. A few days passes that way and I go into the kitchen one morning and basically it looks like a crazy person went loose in there. There was food thrown all over the place, multiple pots of pasta, uneaten bowls of cereal, bananas, loads of stuff. Lo and behold, it was John. He then knocked on my bedroom one evening to apologise to me and handed me a Louis Vuitton handbag. I assumed this was a knockoff, but it could very well have been real. I was like, why are you giving me this? He said to say, sorry. I was like, no, no, just the apology is enough. Anyway, he left the handbag in my room and went. The next time I saw him, he was in his room and I could see it was a mess. Lots of random stuff. And he was like, you can take whatever you want. I was like, no, you're all right. I don't want anything. Then he started acting really weird and getting aggressive. I went to leave and he picked up a kitchen knife from the bed and held it to my throat. I was completely freaked out. I left immediately and ran back to my room. Freaked out because I couldn't lock the door from the inside. Next thing, the door whips open. John storms in and screams, I'm taking the Louis Vuitton handbag. Grabs the bag and leaves. I'm obviously freaked out, don't know what to do, so I text the landlord. The next morning, I'm walking to work and I see John in the neighbourhood wearing layers of t-shirts and jumpers. On top, an oversized Lakers shirt, a weird hat, basketball in one hand and the Louis Vuitton handbag in the other. He literally looked like a nut job. I'm like, shit, this is bad. I go to work and come back to stay at the house that night as I have nowhere else to go. The following morning, I go downstairs and John starts shouting at me, saying this is his house, that I'm being evicted. Then he started screaming that his girlfriend is Katie Price and who do I think I am complaining to the landlord about him in his own house? I ran out the front door crying, called the police and explained what happened. But all they said was to find somewhere else to stay and basically there was nothing they could do for me. In the meantime, I contacted the landlord and he turned on me, saying I shouldn't have went to the police because it reflects badly on him. It also turns out that John's mother is an old friend of the landlord. He said he wouldn't kick John out and if I had an issue with that, I had to leave. Moving in London is very expensive. You need to have one month's rent and a deposit. I was earning 16000 a year. I could barely pay my rent as it was and I wasn't eligible for a credit card or overdraft. All my family are in Ireland. I literally had no way of getting £2,000 overnight. I went to stay with my friend and her boyfriend for a while. I looked for somewhere new to live and tried to save some money together. The weekend after I left, I got a text from one of the other tenants saying, 
come back to the house. John has been committed. Apparently, after I left, John became more and more erratic. He went out on the Friday night and got into a fr- and got into a fight. When the police came, he was ranting and raving about Katie Price being his girlfriend, so they brought him into the hospital. It transpired that John had bipolar disorder. He had medication that he had stopped taking and definitely should not have been smoking weed. He had been suspended from work a few weeks prior to his erratic behaviour. He had become reckless with his money, which is why I think the handbag may have been a real after all. His parents came up to London to take him back home. The landlord was also very apologetic and embarrassed. I didn't actually move out in the end. The house was okay after that. I blocked him on Facebook and I was on edge about seeing him for a couple of years after that. But that subsided with time. Weirdly, I don't believe he actually would have physically hurt me. I think he just wanted to intimidate me. Emma. Oh my God. Mm. God, that's love very sad, isn't it? The two of them. The two of them. Yeah, the two of them. It's 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 a hard one, like isn't it? Isn't that's, it? Yeah, it's it's really sad on both of them. Yeah, like bipolar disorder is, it's an awful condition. My very good friends has it, and it's it's very something sad. you can't. I no, feel like you can control it. We'll never, we'll yeah. never obviously know because no, neither yeah. of us have it. But yeah. God love him. Obviously, he's probably just a nice young man, and then. Just without the medication, completely different, and as you say. Bipolar, you're a completely different person. Mm. Yeah, very, very sad. But look, I hope he got the help that he needed. And Emma's after moving on with her life. Scary well. for her as well, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, it is. It's frightening. It's so frightening for both of them. But to be fair, she does sound fairly understanding after it all, despite she what does, she's She does, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a very well written email as well, so thank you for that. Yeah, and you, I suppose when you end up renting and stuff like that, you, like... You, you end up living with people from all different backgrounds, people with all different, you know, situations. It's scary when you like, think about it. Like it moving is. into a house there. like With a with, random stranger. With a random four or five lads or girls or a mixture or whatever. Yeah, my first time renting in college in Limerick when I was 19, my first year of college, uh, we was five other girls. One girl now is one of my, I was going to say my best friends to this day, Samantha. Yeah. Uh, we are still great, great friends. And um, we were renting a house in Limerick, just crossed away from Mary Eye, and like we had a ball. But there's something always a bit weird with the landlord. Well, he was a bit of a prick, to be honest, let's just say, right? But it was something always just a bit, we were a bit on edge, you know, this yeah. kind of, you know, you're meant to give so many hours notice before you call and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But what we noticed were like he was um, visiting, you know, unannounced and stuff like that. Now, not that we were, like we were all going on our student nights out and stuff. We weren't damaging in the house or anything yeah. but it was always something a bit suspicious and then I never forget one time he came into one of the girls was in bed and I think she wasn't home or anything like that I think she was under the weather I remember he went upstairs into the bed to her oh, word. and we were kind of like that's very bizarre behaviour but didn't it turn out that he um, had gone to court for molesting his own daughter his paedophile no yeah and we found out that after we had no idea so like we literally had a paedophile as a landlord come around the house unannounced to us I remember how I remember at some stage, I don't know why, but I remember hiding in the wardrobe and I remember Samantha hiding me or something. I don't know what was going on, yeah. but I just have a vision. Uh, this is nearly 20 years ago, that's how old I am. But I remember hiding and th- there was just something always about him. We'd no idea. See, that's it. So you've no and idea. You know what the funny thing is then? You've got all these people, oh, give us a reference there. Like it's, as that girl said, they're very hard to rent in London. You have to give all this documentation. That's well in Ireland. Can I get a few um, reference there about the landlord and your background, please? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I often think that you hear all these sex for rent stories, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, so we, our landlord was a paedophile. We had no idea. We and this is a few years later. We were all like found out. And we were all like texting each other and everything. Going, oh my god, you see this? He's actually a convicted paedophile. But you always got a kind of a weird vibe. Off we him, always got a weird vibe. It was always something when he was calling and announcing everything. It was always something. It was just something about him. And then we like found out that, and we were absolutely horrified. Horrified. Absolutely. Horrified. And we got a second um, reply as well. Hi girls, love the podcast. This may sound weird, but this actually happened. So about four years ago, my brother noticed our neighbour Mary was looking in my front window while he was having a few drinks with the lads. He asked her if she was all right, but she would just hung around anyways and they ignored her. The next day a letter came through the letterbox. It was a piece of letter folded over that said, if you want to have sex with me, call me. 
from Mary. We laughed it off at the time and we noticed she would be looking in the window as she passed by the house. Eventually she started coming to the door, knocking on it and sending more letters in the door. It started to get worse and worse. Eventually she started drinking basically on my windowsill at my sitting room windows. Sometimes she would even fall asleep at our front door. We'd call the guards but nothing would happen. They'd remove her and then she'd come back roaring the letterbox or knocking on the door. I ended up phoning her landlord and they gave her a few warnings. Eventually she was moved to a different estate but within the same area so whenever I was in town and if I saw Mary she would follow me. She wanted to talk to me all the time because she was in love with me. Every time she called over I would call the guards and I think at this stage there were over 200 calls. Eventually she was brought to court but the judge brushed it off and stated do not go near the house again which of course she did. I got so fed up I tried to look for other houses but everything was just far too expensive. When I started not giving her attention then she started to damage my car. Sometimes she would pass out on the steps of my house and when I called the guards they'd ask me why I wasn't outside helping her. I eventually found her family on Facebook and I messaged them. Two or three messages were opened but no replies. I was so annoyed because if someone in my family was acting like this, I would of course take action. One day she walked into my house while my son's dad was putting him to bed. He heard someone downstairs and came down to see Mary in the house. He kicked her out and the guards were called but they just brought her home. She would arrive back within a few hours. Finally, I met with a really good guard and she really tried her best and whenever she was on and in the station she would come out straight away. She also got in touch with Mary's sister and she finally stopped coming to the house. Ah, uh, yeah, but like, how long did that take? <sighs> I mean, like, come on. And like, I know the Gardaí have a lot to put up with, but a lot of the times when you, when someone is trying to contact them, it shouldn't be just brushed off like that. Absolutely. Like, one guard said, why aren't you outside helping her? Yeah, that's harassment. That's they, absolutely Like, she's harassing shocking. them. But you'd wonder if it was a man doing it to a woman, because it was two, it was a woman doing it to a woman, would it be different? See, I don't know. I just, I'm shocked. Absolutely shocking. Shocking. But you think they'd put, like, one of those, um, what's that thing called when you can't come near somebody? Bar- Order? A bearing order, like just get that up straight away. Like. I suppose, but do you see a lot of them need to go to court and everything. Is, is that a court? A lot of like, process. Yeah. yeah. Listen, everything in this country needs to go to court. Not uh, like myself. Well, oh, did you go? What's the date? Um, October, but I October. can't go. Are you? What are you going to do? I get my fucking teeth done. Ah, oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ Almighty! I during the course of the day, um, hi, I actually done. can't do that date. But like, would you be free? And oh, I you did not. not. Uh, you got a summons for this date and I was like well I'm actually out of the country and they're like well do you have like your flight details but at that stage I didn't book my flights yet oh, so I booked it after heck. I got the summons and I what are you going to do? go get my fucking teeth done I'm waiting fucking months for this oh. I'm not going, fuck it's not like I'm up for murder oh my god I didn't know this at all yeah girl well I'm glad that got resolved anyway and listen the guards have an awful lot to put up with for any of the British listeners our guards are police do you know what I mean? Um, I'm chuffed. Oh, fucking ick. What did you That's say nice. there in my question box? Oh yeah, put up. What am I going doing? Start with S. S. And you said shagging because you're British now. Yeah. Yeah, you're I English said, now. <laughs> I don't ever use that word. If I use it's that a word. It's disgusting I, word. It is disgusting word because I just said chuffed once. Yeah, and, and then she, she put up on her Instagram there over the week. I'm doing something tomorrow that begins with S. Guess what it is or something like that. And I put in Shag. Shagging because you think you're think fucking you're British. <laughs> Actually, quick one for you. I said during the week um, at work, I goes, don't be doing the clown now. Mm. They didn't have a clue. It was just swearing I was speaking Mandarin. They were like, what? I goes, don't be doing the clown. Yeah. They had no idea. And then I said something about, we're talking about chocolate. And I said, will you get me a purple snack? No idea what a purple snack was. Do they not have purple snacks They England? do, but they were like, we don't call that at all. I was like, what's going on here? What do they call it? They were just like, that's the, the it's snack. a small snack. And I was like, yeah. that's the purple snack. The purple How do you snack. not know that? They didn't know doing the clown and they didn't know purple snack. I move home, never mind. I know, I was like, you're a disgrace. Mm. No, they know it now. They know it now. But anyway, doing the fool, doing the clown, doing the maggot, acting the maggot. I love that. Or acting the maggot. I love, yeah. You're acting the goal, I'd say. Yeah, we, we love yeah. a bit of goal. We love the goal. Gawks. The gawks. Anyway, speaking of the gawks, we've got X. We've got X of the week. What's your ick of the every week? Every week. Um, fuck it, you and your stupid words like shagging, chuffed. You can't be pinning it on me all the time. Actually. So I didn't say those oh, words. No, actually, I seen on the Lewis this morning. 
a fella wearing Converse don't like fellas wearing Converse. I don't mind them. What kind of they? I don't know about the high tops now on a man because it would take from his height. No, I just don't like Converse in general. Flash, run. Like, I don't mind New Balance now or Nike. I like New like Balance, that. yeah. Same, but what if Converse. they were Machia, as we say, Converse? Would no, that Yacht Worse. Yeah, I know I wouldn't like that either. Just me now and everything I own is like Machia. Machia. Machia is... Machia. It's fake, yeah, fake. Knock off, yeah. knock off, yeah. knock off. Yeah, my my one as well, and we don't want to be going back to men all the time, but my one is because there was a fellow I was messaging on Bumble, the Cork fella actually over in London, and I'm just so busy, honest God, with all that's going on in my life, right? I'm not going to mention the M word, I'm not going to mention it, okay? And then I'd ignored him for three weeks. I didn't even ignore him, I just forgot about him. I'm yeah. calling myself Brenda the Banshee. Yeah, yeah. I'm just ghosting everyone. I am Banshee, like, you know? So. I, one Saturday night, I think it was, it was last Saturday night, I just said, you know, I was sitting on the couch and I was waiting to do something. I was like, hi, how are you? Sorry, I, uh, I've i been really busy, da, da, da. I hadn't even put the phone back on the sofa, my new word for my coach. And he replied, come on, man. Man, I hadn't come back to you two or three weeks and you're, you, the message had just delivered and you were straight back. Just ignore me for an hour. Yeah. Even an hour, it would have been like, ah, oh, come on. I'd be sweating. The like... phone was still hot yeah. in my hand on the sofa and your man was on. And then I was there going, nah, I said, that's giving me Like, when you think about it, they can't fucking win. They take too long. I know. No, they take and too quick. We're giving out there. I went off to do my little bit of TV thing and talk TV that night. You know, they call me dating expert and all this carry on. Then the next day, the morning, he double text. And then he did say, how's the training going for the M? I'm not saying the word. And I didn't reply since. And that was my week of the week. It's just ignore me for a while. Yeah, give me the yeah. Uh, did you message him back? No, no, I'm just too busy. Jeez. I know, but in the ban- I'm in Banshee mode. But listen, I'm going back to the homeland, Italy. Oh. I'm definitely going to get off with Luigi or a Mario. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck. I'm oh, telling you, ocean, bring it back. Ocean. Bring it back. So that was my ick. All right. Ye also messaging your icks and somebody wrote in slurping coffee, tea, or soup. It makes me sick. No, I know I'm a loud eater, but I don't slurp. I don't slurp either. They're rotten. I'd get a laugh out of this one. People who have Insta pages for their pets and then dash, sorry, Brenda. Mm. Well, I'll tell you now what gives me the feckin' ick, right? That's Winston's account. It is dormant. I only do it, go on his page out to stalk people. And what gives me the ick, this person who sent it in, their profile picture is their baby. How does that make sense? Hmm. That gives me the ick. Yeah. I don't mind, like, I love the twinnies be on your Instagram. I love seeing my friends, children, whatever. Not, like, not too much of it. I'll be honest. I don't think people want to see Winston all the time when I was at home with him, okay? But why is your, what gives me the ick is your child is your Facebook photo or your Instagram. You're not your child. Like, I'm not texting two-year-old Ted. Yeah, you know I mean? know, yeah, Like, yeah. Well, that gives me the ick. So that's my comeback on that. Stop doing it, lads. Like, when I'm messaging someone on WhatsApp and I get their number... And then there, I've one for a fella there and it's twins come up on my uh, WhatsApp. Dave's coming up and I'm like, what are your kids doing yeah, come up, Dave? I know, Dave, that's not you. I'm not texting a five-year-old. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my comeback for that. Men who stick their <laughs> tongues I thought you said men sticks. <laughs> what? <laughs> men sticks. <laughs> <laughs> that would give you the egg. Yeah, literally. Go on. Men who <laughs> stick their tongues out in pictures for Tinder profiles. Oh, no. You're guilty for that now as well. Like. I never do the tongue. The fucking no, tongue, the lizard. That's Jewel. That's what bottles do. Okay. Kate Moss and all them do that. I've seen a farmer Miss Cock doing that. That's where I picked up that from. And Brenda be flat no, out. No, no, no. You think, no, the tongue, my tongue doesn't go out that far. You, listen, I've seen you with the tongue yeah. thing. You often are doing photos of me and you say to me in the court, are you doing the tongue well, like thing? Earlier, like yeah. earlier, like earlier. He goes, you no, like, I was shocked. <laughs> you, yeah? She said, are you doing the tongue thing? This one, a grown man saying ta-ta instead of goodbye with someone he doesn't know. Yes, but that's a bit odd. He's talking baby like. Oh, this, go on. Do you see number two there? Read that one. Ick of the week is when my best friend and her boyfriend has sex in your parents' bed at your house party. Oh my God. The room was out of bounds. Claims they didn't, but we all know, had to <gasps> wash the sheets three times. That's someone who was on the bus with us. Yeah, I see that. Oh. That, no, I'd get so cross over that. Do you know what, actually? Years ago, when the girls stayed in my house, I, we were out. And she came back and she stayed in my house. We brought a fella back, but we only brought him back to drink and whatever. Yeah. I went upstairs to bed. Dad got up the next morning, like half six, seven o'clock to go to work. Walked into our sitting room, two of them were riding. Stop. Yeah, I never talked to her since. Oh, stop my it. Dad, my dad fucked the two of them out. So was she a good friend at the time? Yeah. 
Yeah, I never ever talked to her. She I'm was like, right. Oh, riding your man. And like, I'm like, how did you hear my dad coming down the fucking stairs? That's like, so disrespectful. And he was in the kitchen, which is obviously next door to the sitting room. And my dad walked in too, but I'm riding. And then did they know he was awake? They had to, because should... he was in the kitchen, which is right next door. And house. they were riding Imagine while like, he was in the yeah? kitchen. Yeah. That's that's never spoke to the girls. Absolutely disgusting. Now bigger fool me now bringing this fella home, but you know what? we're all fucking stupid. No, right? that's we're only so drinking in the house. I get whatever, very like. cross at that. Yeah, now. we're all friends, like, and I was like, really a couple of drinks, and I ended up going to bed, and they started. No, I up. wouldn't either. I'd get very odd over that now. And if someone went up to my mother and father's room and at that, I would that no, I'd, it's I'd disrespectful. I'd like. go red. I'd like yeah. that's not fucking funny, and I'm all up for a laugh at that. That no that's, is it crosses really, the line, like yeah, that yeah. crossed the line. Oh my god, I can't get over that. Customers arriving 40 minutes late for an appointment. I get that. Yeah. Because it's a domino effect then. It Everything is, is fucked. It is. For but the I had a hair appointment last week actually and I was going to be... I was going to be around 12, 13 minutes late and I rang and she was like, well, yeah, there is a 10 minute grace time. And I said, hold tough there now. And she said, it's up to the hairdresser's discretion. I said, hold tough there. And I was on the phone to her and I was like, I waited 20 minutes there a couple of weeks ago. She was late for me and I said nothing. Yeah. So I'm sure this will be all right. Yeah, I know. I'd say she didn't know what to do on the phone. And I walked into the salon then and I'm telling you, if she'd said, sorry, you're too late, I would have sat there. Yeah, I know. And I was like, no, because it that's that's it the can't night. work one way no. and not the other. So like when she yeah. said that to me on the phone, I goes, Hold here now a second, I said. I was getting a bit I get that, like you to hold I, stand I, your ground, like. Yeah, I yeah. I was too. Um one more last one. Emptying the bin but not replacing the bin bag. Yeah, no, some and someone says, I know I'm sad. But that that's it's, little stuff that yeah. would you mad. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Hey, emptying the bins. Yeah, but just hey, put in the, the bag bin. after. Yeah. Just enough. put in the feckin' bag after. Anyway, are you smarter than your five-year-olds? So if you don't know, Julie's got two gorgeous, gorgeous twins, Erin Rose and Fionn, and they're five years old. And uh, yeah, they're pretty smart. Actually, I was doing spellings with my niece this morning. Mm. She'd learn what kitten was in Irish. You think Wales girl? Pusheen. No, Pusheen it was. It's not so uncaught. Kitten. Oh, kitten or... But then Pusheen, I was like, don't tell me that's P-U-I-S-I-N. And I was like, don't tell me it's, you know. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so I was doing spellings with them. I really and they were great. But anyway, so sorry. Julie's lovely twin. So we do we test her knowledge. I wonder you smarter than my niece, who is I can't remember her age. <laughs> I can't remember their age, Jane. I'm so sorry. Um, so I'm gonna. <laughs> I hope she listens to this. <laughs> oh my god, I can't remember. One of them is I can't. I'm, Jesus Christ! Look, I know my godson is nearly. He's over four. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay, so question number one is What is the capital of Iceland? Um, Kentuck. Kentuck. <laughs> I can't even know it's in a different way. Kentuck. Kentuck. Yeah, so I don't know. Kentuck. <laughs> well, I know, is it Kentuck or Kentuck? Kentuck. You... <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how to speak. <laughs> Say it again. K took. <laughs> no, it's, it is a hard one. God. Reykjavik. Oh, fuck, I knew that. Reykjavik. You knew that. <laughs> you knew that. that. You'll meet some lad. No, he's from Iceland. You'll be like, Are you from K talk? <laughs> Are you from K talk? Right. Number two. Spelling one. As Rupert Murdoch, you were mentioned that last night in your Instagram, has stepped down from Fox and News Corporation, one of the biggest media moguls, the biggest media mogul in the world. There was a series based on him called Succession. Spell the word succession. S-U-C-C-E-S-S-I-O-N. Oh my God, you got it. That's amazing. I watched it. Oh my God. Okay, one yeah, out of two. Okay, in the poem Humpty Dumpty, who couldn't put him back together? Humpty Dumpty, Samuel, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't for Humpty to Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty together. Humpty to Dumpty. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty together again. Yeah, together. Humpty to Dumpty. Two out of three. He was an egg, wasn't he? An egg, yeah. He's a oh, very great old poems. Number four. What station does Pat Kinney work for? Hint, we're in the building. RT. One. Two. Spin. <laughs> Spin so west of Pat Kinney. <laughs> no, you must be joking, mate. I actually put this in as a joke one. You're not even getting the joke ones. What station does Pat Kinney work for? Is he on this floor? He's on the two floors below us. Pat Kinney used to be on the late late, one of the biggest broadcasters. RT. In Ireland. 
One. We are in the building. We're not Spin. in Danny Brook. Spin. <laughs> That's the only fucking sign I see. News talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that a radio? Oh, <sighs> God almighty. <laughs> Last question to that is two out of four. I've never seen him in her. Yeah, no, we don't really see him. No. He, he's, he's finished by the time we're in. Imagine if he interviewed us. What a laugh. Fuck. He might, though. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, he might. Pat, if you're listening, we want to go on your show. <laughs> All right, good old Pat. Okay, so as you're doing your dancing, dancing with the stars, no, it's not called dancing, it's just Strictly, come, strictly dancing come Dancing, yeah. Paragoline. We're going to do a dance question. Who did Patrick Swayze play in Dirty Dancing? Oh, God. We all what know. What does it begin with? I'm not giving you hints. Oh, my God. John. Kind of. Jack Joe. It's J, is that Don't it? be looking over at me. Is it J? Just J- guess once. I'm not looking at me. I'm not making Johnny. eye contact. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> kind of. John. Johnny. John. Joe. One more guess. The next word you say is your guess. Is it? Am I very hot? Oh, just tell me what it is. Some of us have to get back to London to run till my Johnny. tomorrow. <laughs> Johnny. Yes, it's Johnny Castle. I would have got the How is your dancing going? Flying it. Flying Jesus, it. we're doing the, uh, what am I doing again? The Charleston. Charleston, oh, that's a good dance. Yeah, good but dance. are we doing a couple of lifts? Oh, oh God, how are the yeah. lifts? Uh, what were you like the first time you lifted, yeah? Screaming. Yeah. Screaming. Well, you, did you have to do the whole thing? You won't be able to lift me now, and I'm. Yeah, and yeah, it's, it's we all very that. embarrassing, like, because like, he's put his arms around my waist and holding oh, my hands God. and looking into each other's eyes for a couple of seconds. It's very embarrassing. Like, I'm yeah. actually fucking purple, like, doing that. I'm so embarrassed. You see, if that was me, now I'd have to be like, look, I know what's going on here. You're going to have to touch me here and there, and we're going to look at each other's eyes. I'm going to just say it here now. But you know what? One thing I would say, I'm all for you doing your dancing. I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader and all that. But then I realised <laughs> that you're dancing, right? Okay. Which is going to be epic, and it's going to be all over your Instagram. You're going to be on all of the attention. I don't like any attention, but I must say, I'm just kind of a bit annoyed that you didn't break the news to me that. Your dancing's on the same weekend as when I got to New York for the M word. Did that marathon. So, um, yeah, just a bit kind of like you could have like warned me sooner because they not changed the date. <laughs> but you're running the Sunday. I'm dancing the I Thursday. I know, yeah, Friday. but like still you're taking like that week, the lead up to it was meant to be my week. And now your here week. you are, you're, da- you're dancing like. I'm doing the Charleston and, and stepping on your You know what I mean? Toes. But this is it. Yeah. Like all attention will be on you. I'm just kind of, what about me in the marathon, you know? So... If you win it, then I will. Yeah, I know. But anyway, listen. She's on to me all the time. Don't be going. I actually didn't even know it was the same again. Somebody said Don't even. Just don't be going on about it all the time, okay? Because I've been very low key over the marathon. Oh, Barry, I didn't even know you were doing it. I barely mentioned it. I've kept it off the podcast. Kept it off the Instagram. Keep it low key, all right? Keep it low key. So until next week, thank you to everyone for listening. If you have an email you want to send us, Julie, you know it off by heart. L-O-R at goloudnow.com Amazing. So that's it for me, Brenda Dennehy. And me, Julie Haynes. Goodbye. Good luck. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>